Hey, uh, welcome back. I uh, hope you had a relaxing holiday, but I, and although I know you've all been working really hard on your uh, atomic physics over the holiday, I imagine you'll be, you'll be uh, raring to get back to work, uh, looking at radioactivity again. So today, uh, I'll just do a, a very short little presentation here. Uh, I'll upload this with some uh, worksheet to go with it. I want to cover the idea of half-life and half-life calculations. Uh, half-life we've already talked about. But before we start this, these calculations, it's just worth recapping uh, what it means. Uh, so the definition is here above my head. The half-life of a radioactive uh, isotope, radioactive element, is the time taken for half of the original number of atoms, radioactive atoms that you start with, to decay. That means equally uh, that you can't measure number of atoms, but you can measure radioactivity. So it therefore means the time taken for half, um, uh, for, for the original level of radioactivity, sorry, uh, to drop to half. Uh, here you can see the graph. Uh, I've left the, 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 the legend on the axis deliberately uh, kind of vague. Uh, the bottom axis, the x-axis, is always time, time taken. And the y-axis can be number of atoms, or it could be uh, radioactivity. And we measured that in counts per minute or counts per second. We also mentioned some other uh, units like the Becquerel. Whatever unit you measure, it's the time taken for half of the uh, amount of radioactivity you start with to, to drop by half. Here we've got um, radioactivity in counts per second. We're starting at 80 counts per second. Um, so therefore, the half-life is the time taken to drop from 80 to 40. And that time on the y-axis is, well, it looks to me, somewhere around six days. Six days there. Okay, uh, let's move on. Uh, here we've got a half-life graph or an exponential decay curve. And up here I've got some typical half-lives from uh, real elements, real radioactive elements. So here we've got boron-12. It's got a tiny half-life measured in much less than a second. So therefore, um, it takes 0.02 seconds for its uh, radioactivity to drop by half. Radio, uh, radium, radium-226, much greater. In this case, about um, uh, 1.6 thousand years. Uh, and then you get to an element like uranium, which has a uh, half-life measured in terms of millions of years. Here we've got the half-life graph of uranium-235. Um, well, actually, one, one uh, measurement of radioactivity I didn't mention previously was you could mention it, uh, you could measure uh, radioactivity in terms of the percent remaining, the percent radioactivity or the percent percentage of atoms remaining. So therefore, the half-life would be the time it takes to go from 100% to 50%. And if we draw a line across, if I can manage it, kind of a straight line, and down. Well, some around 700 million years, as we said up there. Okay, so let's get to uh, measurements of, uh, oh sorry, calculations, uh, radioactivity half-life calculations. Um, this is how I'd like you to do it if you get these kind of questions on an exam. I'd like you to basically draw a table. Now, any question, they can only ask you one of three things. Uh, to measure one of three things. The first is time. The second is uh, would be radioactivity. You can read my writing. Radioactivity. And the third thing would be possibly they could ask you mass. Mass of atoms remaining. That's another measurement. Now time, well, the measurement, the unit of time depends on uh, the element you're looking at. We already saw it could be measured in seconds, days, years, thousands of years, or millions of years. Uh, for my example, let's use years. Now, radioactivity, I already told you, it could be measured in percentage, counts per minute, counts per second. Uh, for this example, let's use counts per second. Uh, mass, well, the SI unit of mass is kilograms. Um, very often it'll be measured in 
grams per second. Okay, so any question they ask you, they can ask you one about the uh, about one of these three things. Um, time in years, let's start at zero. Radioactivity, uh, counts per second. To make it easy, let's say the, the element we're looking at, let's call it smithium, named after me. Let's say we start at 100 uh, counts per second. Nice round number. Uh, mass. Let's make that a little bit more difficult. Uh, I'll just make up a number off the top of my head. 425 grams, let's say. Now, in a table like this, we just go from half-life to half-life to half-life to half-life. I can't imagine any question on uh, on the IGCSE will ask you to do more than, well, here we got one, two, three, four half-lives, maybe five half-lives at a push. Uh, let's do four half-lives. Right, so in our first half-life we go from zero time and let's say my element of smithium, to make it simple, let's say it's got a half-life of a hundred years. So one half-life will happen after a hundred years. Second half-life obviously will happen after 200 years, third half-life will take 300 years and the fourth life will happen after 400 years. Right, the radioactivity, we start with well, that's visible. We start with, that's supposed to be 100, we start with 100 counts per second. After 100 years, the count rate of smithium, we would expect to drop to 50 counts per second. Equally, this could be percentage. It could be becquerels. Remember, those units can, can, can vary. Uh, after another half-life goes past, half of 50 is 25 counts per second. After another half-life go, half goes past, well, half of... 25 counts per second would be, I forget this right, 12.5 counts per second. And half of 12.5 would be 6.25. So therefore, if your question asks you about the amount of radioactivity of a certain amount of years, all you need to do is take the correct number from that table. However, if the question asks you about mass, we just need to do the same thing again. If we start with 225, and I hope my math is going to be okay here. Uh, after one half life, half of 425 is 212.5. Another half life goes past, I make that 106.25. Let's just round it up to one decimal place. We'll do the same now. Uh, another half life, well, half of 106.353. Point one grams, and after another half life goes past, half of that twenty six point six. Okay. So therefore, they can't really ask me a question as long as I've done a sufficient number of half lives. Any question that they ask me on on the GCSE, all I need to do is take the correct value from this table, uh, and that's how I'd like you to approach these questions uh, when you see them. I'll I'll give you obviously some uh, practice questions to try with that. The only other possible things they might ask you is to plot the graph or read values off a graph, uh, which you can see above my head, and we've already seen that before. Okay, so I hope that was helpful. Um, it's our first lesson for a while. Um, like I always say, um, stay safe and make sure your, your family stays safe. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Okay, take care.